everyone, we are back. Sorry for the inconvenience. It seems we went into some less than favorable technical difficulties. But hopefully they're solved now. Worst thing we need is that to happen again. Is that to happen again? Is that to happen again? Okay, now that we're back, let's get started. Back for the top. We will be reacting to the V Sojo Nux Taku incident. We will also be reacting to Project Malady, Blackmail, and also, oh, oh, the ad of the sex past of Nisi Sanji. Done by Rimi Ru Evening Star. Let's begin, shall we? The VTuber community, a vibrant and often chaotic space, is no stranger to drama, but few controversies have left audiences feeling as dissatisfied as the one involving Vishojo and Nutsdaku. This complex saga, fueled by miscommunication, misunderstandings, and a misplaced sense of trust, exposed deep rifts within the VTuber community and raised critical questions about transparency, accountability, and the delicate balance of power between creators and their audiences. The story begins with Bishojo, a popular independent VTuber agency, and Nuxtaku, a prominent indie content creator known for his insightful commentary and comedic takes on anime and sometimes the VTuber world. Vishojo and Nux had a long-standing history, with Nux regularly collaborating with Vishojo members such as Project Melody and playing a significant role in some of these creators' early growth. Everything pointed to the fact that Nux and Vishojo were on more than good terms, at least publicly. But in October 2021, a series of events unfolded that would dramatically alter their relationship. Fake Vishojo emails were sent to two unaffiliated VTubers, including Nux, in an attempt to solicit personal data for potentially attempting doxing, attacking, and even swatting. Swatting is a severe problem, and it involves making a false police report to prompt an armed police response toward an unsuspected victim. This dangerous, highly illegal, and widespread hoax puts lives at risk, as even a single wrong move can result in fatal consequences. Moreover, swatting imposes substantial financial burdens on government, often costing hundreds of thousands of dollars. Knox, understandably concerned, reached out to Vishojo for clarification. The agency confirmed that they were They're aware of the incident and were actively investigating am. the matter. However, things took a dramatic turn when Nux, along with fellow content creator Murahar, uncovered the identity of the perpetrator. On November 21st, 2021, a month later after his tweets, Nux released a video detailing his investigation and the methods used to catch the scammer. Claiming his main goal would be to spread awareness about this fissure in the VTubing community and raise awareness so no other VTuber would fall prey to them. In this video, Nux details the situation in its entirety and provides a detailed explanation of his personal involvement in assisting the cybersecurity team of Ishojo in effectively neutralizing the threat. Nux outlines how he's received an email claiming he's been accepted into a Vishojo edition. Knowing he hadn't applied, he contacted Vishojo's CEO Gunrun to warn him. Nux then, in a clever move, managed to bait the scammer by giving him a burner phone number, gaining some of their information before passing it on to Gunrun. He texted me on the phone number that I just got as a burner phone. It was pretty great. I'm very proud of myself, patting myself on the back for the epic foresight. The scammer himself was found bragging in a Discord server, and one of Nux fans, who happened to be in that server, reported back to him and gave him proof of this as a video. This dude was flexing that he got my real name and phone number, which he didn't, and he was posting it in his Discord servers, and one of the people in the Discord server that he was posting it was a fan of mine, reached out to me saying, Oh my god, you got dogs! 
which he didn't, and uh, basically introduced me to someone that knows that guy personally. <laughs> he then went on to explain that this scammer had already swatted several people and targeted at least 12 VTubers, including himself. Here she has a tweet saying, oh my god, I'm so excited, my dreams are coming true, etc, etc. In other words, she just got an email saying that she was accepted into V Shoujo, and then the next tweet right after that, here saying that the police are at my door, I don't know what's going on, I'm very scared. That is when she actually got swatted by this asshole. One of the victims in the VTuber Saki unfortunately fell prey to the scam, believing the email to be real and providing her information, and got swatted. After Nux posted the video, Vishojo's official account even responded to it, thanking him for working with them and adding their own statement about the situation. This response gave the impression that Vishojo was aware of the scam and actively working with Nux to address it. But Nux's video, while seemingly well-intentioned, sparked a firestorm of controversy. Bishojo members expressed their disappointment and concern on Twitter, fearing that the public release of the video could compromise their safety and reveal information that could be used to harm them. The situation escalated quickly, with Bishojo members feeling betrayed and their trust in Nuts shattered. The online community, fueled by the drama, began to dissect the situation, scrutinizing every detail and offering a wide range of opinions. This caused Twitter and the communities of all content creators involved to erupt in a backlash against Nux. At the time this happened, Nux first remained silent, probably trying to work something behind the scenes, but the general opinion here was that he was largely at fault. Nianers in a private message on her Discord server took a more critical stance, accusing Nux of taking credit for the work of Bishojo's cybersecurity team and exploiting his friends for clickbait. She also voiced concern about the video's content, highlighting the potential dangers of sharing sensitive information without proper care. Though she kept these accusations within her own community and only into her supporters' channel, these were some of the most serious accusations levied against Nux during the entire event. Namely accusing him of cloud chasing and of recording a friend in a secret call to turn it into a video, as well as using her friend's face frequently for clickbait. Being the internet, these of course got leaked almost immediately, and the internet quickly disseminated Nianer's criticism, further fueling the conflict. Nianer's, who's been an internet personality going back a decade, I think, uh... She released uh, this Discord post specifically throwing Nux under the bus, saying that he was using them for clickbait, that it was all for clout, and that he completely jeopardized their safety. Now, I've gone through the entire video. He never mentions any of the VTubers aside from Saki, who seems to be pretty thankful for the video, any VTuber that was a target of these doxers. So the statement that he put them in danger is a little, little sketchy. On November 24th, the indie VTuber Snuffy went to Twitter detailing an incident she had with Nux back on her stream in March. She explained that she had received a donation from Nux Taku, daring her to respond to a self-harm joke in exchange for further donations. Nux frequently creates videos in which he offers to donate a certain sum of money if VTubers do something outlandish. This particular instance may have been one of those videos. However, Snuffy expressed her discomfort for being put on the spot you on such sensitive topics. How long is this video? Oh my gosh. It's 45 minutes long. <laughs> my second most would be like, maybe like a Ghibli thing. If you say that, explain. Why are you threatening me? <laughs> I feel I feel like I'm being held at gunpoint. <laughs> like say it, spell it out loud, and explain. Kilometers. Oh, meters. Kilometer. One kilometer. No pressure or anything, but I'll donate five thousand more bits if you say it, explain. While well, fucking Paul is a legend. Oh my god. Make it 7,000 bits if you tell me your top 10 Logan Paul moments. I like it when he opened Pokemon cards. I liked his apology video. It was pretty cringe. I appreciate it. To which Vebe responded as well. Nux replied by showcasing DMs from a few months prior where he and Snuffy had apologized to each other, but then subsequently deleted this exchange. Despite Nux's apparent lack of social awareness in this situation, it serves to highlight the intense emotional charge of the moment. Even VTubers, who typically avoid controversial topics, were swept up in the heat of the moment. 
Nux, after facing a barrage of criticism over the course of these three days, finally responded. First by privating his video and then by releasing a tweet longer explaining his perspective. The announcement of the video privatization itself drew criticism from several v shoujo talents who questioned the decision to keep the video up for longer than necessary. In the tweet longer, Nox claimed that he had, in fact, discussed the Not a lot of people know this, but the video of Nuts that he privated has been reposted a couple of times about him taking credit for all this by other content creators. Uh, sadly, they cannot do all the damage control they thought they could, as some people have downloaded the video through video downloaders online. Oh, heart me. And reposted it. Sadly, Resojo can't stop it all, but they have done a good job so far. Matter with the Shoujo representatives and the cybersecurity team for over four hours, and even one of the members of the V Shoujo group who had approved his decision to release the video. He categorically denied that the V Shoujo team had not requested for him to refrain from uploading the video. Because this statement was a direct Nux. contradiction to what the girls seemed to. If you ask me, this is when Nux Takeru should have known that there was boundaries. It should have had at least some self-control over his actions. Uh, this definitely falls on Nux not realizing that there's a time to stop and a time to... A time to stop and think, or a time to actually take action. This is on Nux making reckless decisions. It is his fault, but at the same time, I can't help but feel it's due to Nux's arrogance and his uh, cocky nature. To believe, this brought even more confusion to the situation. As the following day, Nux shared another enough. video on Nux Twitter, where he included receipts cocky, of conversations selfish, between him and a representative and of the shoujo, of where they discussed the video in question. The Vishojo team had requested several modifications for the video, which Nux complied with. He claims that no one from the team specifically asked him not to post this video, except for his brother, who was yeah. concerned for his safety. Interestingly, oh, in the messages, Vishojo even thanked Nux for his efforts in raising awareness about he a public issue and even asked him to include their official statement. It's noteworthy that the statement was crafted with the assumption that viewers had already watched the video. I got swatted once in the past and it scarred me. People die in these situations and coming close to it happening again terrified me. When I brought this to the attention of V Shoujo, they told me that they knew this was going on for a while, never said anything publicly, and as a result of that, I felt like V Shoujo put me and others at risk. Before posting that video, I was in a group chat with the CEO of V Shoujo, one of the girls, and the head cybersecurity officer. V Shoujo acknowledged that they knew about this swatter for a long time and did nothing publicly. I didn't make the video to endanger anyone as the culprits were already brought to light. They acknowledged that they have no problem if I publish this video and it's entirely my right as a victim of the swatter. Nevertheless, I showed them the video before uploading so they could let me know if I should make any changes or ask me to potentially not upload at all. They asked for changes like blurring things and denying the culprit's notoriety and I complied. My brother was the only person that asked me not to post the video because he was afraid for my safety beefing with us water but I thought it was prudent for the safety of others in the community, and V Shoujo mentioned that they appreciated me doing this public service announcement. When I mentioned that this video would be helpful to them as well, they thanked me, and asked me if I can include an official statement from them and link in the description, which I did. The statement was written with the assumption that the viewers watched my video. They still refused to mention that someone was impersonating them, and they continued to thank me for working with them. Their official statement had the header, Thank you Nux for working with us, but it was deleted when some of the Vishojo girls got upset with my video and claimed that I was repeatedly asked not to post it, which is untrue as I showed you. Nux then offers an apology for neglecting the talent's feelings and failing to swiftly remove the video. Furthermore, he expressed his regret for requesting a retraction of their statement as a condition for taking down the video. Additionally, this video provided an important piece of the missing puzzle, a censored screenshot of the group DN where the controversial video was being discussed. It revealed the presence of Gunrun, the CEO, a censored Vishojo member, the Vishojo representative 
Phoenix and not Saku. However, internet detectives were quick to corroborate this with a now redacted tweet from Fruit showcasing DMs between her and Nux. In these messages, Nux mentioned that Project Melody was the one that was part of the group DM and was aware of the situation. This revelation raised eyebrows as it contradicted the girl's claims that Vishojo's cybersecurity team had advised Nux against releasing the video. Adding to the confusion, Project Melody had publicly criticized Nux for releasing the video, stating that he had disregarded their feelings and was prioritizing clicks. So what was the truth? Was this a colossal misunderstanding, an honest mistake, or something else? Vishojo then, in an attempt to shed light on the situation, released a blog post outlining their perspective, a move they stated that unfortunately required sharing private conversations to address the concerns. While acknowledging the seriousness of the allegations, Vishojo emphasized that issues of safety are not grounds for content and that they do not condone harassment. They also stated they would be moving their investigation back to a private That's level to protect the safety of all parties involved. Vishojo first addressed the concerning online. allegations that they left indie VTubers in the dark and that they were still at risk of phishing attacks from the vishojo.org domain. They clarified that only two phishing attempts had been confirmed, one targeting Nux and the other targeting Saki, meaning other indie VTubers were not at risk. To further address the concerns, Vishojo began by showcasing their initial DMs with Nux, highlighting the potential harm of publicly releasing information that could hinder the investigation and compromise the case against the Swatter. They then showcased the DMs between Nux and the Vishojo representant, Phoenix. Their concerns being that this person was seeking notoriety and making an announcement of it would only bolster them. Vishojo maintained they never gave Nux permission to release the video, explaining they had limited time to suggest edits and create a statement. The most damning accusation, however, was that Nux ignored their suggestion for edits, which could explain the concern voiced by other VTubers and even Melody. The line, staff's context, there is a negative history of interaction between Vishojo and Nux that led us to proceed with extreme caution, hints at past issues that fueled Vishojo's cautious approach and perhaps more tension than we thought so behind the scenes. Is it simply the same accusations Nianers mention about the secret voice call recording or something else like Bay mentions in this screenshot. That is one of the few mysteries that remain from this whole arc to this day. Vishojo then unveiled the full context of the screenshots Nux presented in his video. Now I gotta be fair to all parties here and give this point to Vishojo. It seems that the cybersecurity expert did in fact inform Nux that his investigation contained misinformation. This revelation shed light on a key point Nux made in his video. He claimed the doctor bragged about obtaining his information and that one of his fans conveniently in the same Discord server alerted him. However, Vishojo's release DMs revealed that this fan was likely working with the doxer. Phoenix, the Vishojo representative, explicitly stated, My comment is specifically about praising that one fan that reached out. I am 99% certain that is a fellow member of the harassment gang and not a fan. Giving them praise will make them focus more on harassing the VTuber community because they think they can manipulate people like this. The concern is that they fed you fake info after showing you the genuine video and confession slash brag. He went on to explain their strategy. Their MO is to do this good cop bad cop thing and this random fan does something to establish credibility and then uses that credibility to feed disinformation to the target. This means Nux was likely given false information by the doctor's accomplice, potentially skewing his understanding of the situation. When Nux defended his decision to release the video, stating that it was irrelevant whether he was misinformed or not, Vishojo conceded a Let's talk about this, because as in the past, the commander has had someone that spied on a certain someone that he also found out that was not only a double agent, but a triple agent. Somebody that was playing both sides for their own credibility. This person will remain mysterious at this moment in time. We do not personally know this person, but they have an account on Twitter slash X. 
As far as we know, this person has not engaged the commander ever since. But I will say this. You should always be careful when you have someone supposedly working with you. They could be a double agent or even a triple agent or maybe even that of a quad agent. Uh, the commander is not proud of being played that one time, but at least the person gave valuable intel when needed. You should always be very careful when you get intelligence, especially from some random people on the internet. You never know what their true goal or plan is, and it's very important to be careful out there. Agreeing that his experience as a victim is absolutely valid. They also go on to say that their polite tone in their response to Nux was a result of treating him as a media professional. But to be fair to Nux and to Fishojo's own admittance, the wording on that wasn't firm enough or even clear enough. They claimed they wanted to give strong warnings, but in a nice way. But do you thank someone and even tell them you appreciate it after they did something you didn't want them to do? As for Nux, was he a little too eager to release this video? Sure. Did his excitement to share an interesting story blindside him? Perhaps. Thank you. After all, he had been working on the I video for the a month and he might have gotten a little overzealous, a little too content-brained about showing off the fruits of his labor. And V. Shoujo turned out to be correct in claiming the information was wrong. Even though Nux claimed he had put the swatter behind bars, several videos by the alleged swatter himself were made taunting Nux Taku just a few days after the incident and showcasing how he had in fact tricked Nux. To all the kids in my comment sections threatening me like, you're gonna get what you deserve, Nux Taku didn't deserve any of this, like, Nothing even happened to him, first of all, and I didn't do anything to you know, him. If I was interested in um, you, you made up the story just I would to get actually marry you just YouTube, for your, your so donuts. <laughs> I want to see you guys do something. Like, you guys are literally fucking harmless. If you're gonna threaten me, at least, like, keep your word and go through with it. I don't know, it's just a laughing matter because it's literally so funny. Like, are you guys gonna do something to me or not? It's been two days and. <laughs> I don't think anything's gonna happen to me. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking harmless vet Alright, bye guys. It is unclear whether or not this person is really who he claims he is, but it's fairly certain the video of the Discord call was wrong along with several other information. In this case, Nux releasing the video would only serve as a warning to the real doxer that an investigation is going on. That could explain the talent's fear of seeing this video go live. But does any of this information relate to the backlash he received on Twitter from the Vishojo girls? Not necessarily, I think everyone can agree that it should have been handled privately. And I believe that stems more from a lack of communication between Vishojo management and the girls or even between Vishojo talents and Nox himself. After all, a video like this shouldn't have come as a surprise to anyone, especially not if you're friends or even acquainted. On November 29th, Nox published a video titled Moving Forward. Forward. In the video, Nux discusses how the situation had caused him significant anxiety and that his primary objective was now to de-escalate the conflict. This meant that no additional receipts would be shown and he would cease discussing the situation altogether, putting it behind him. Ultimately, all parties involved issued apologies. Iron Mouse's and Zentria's apologies particularly stood out and were praised by the community for their transparency and accountability. Zentria posted a Twitter longer apologizing for getting her community involved and for making tweets that riled up everyone due to her seeing her friends being harassed by members of the community and felt like she had to defend them. She then went one step further and posted a second public apology under his recent video stating, I would personally, since I fucked up publicly, feel the need to apologize publicly to you from my part in this and inciting people as well during this situation. As you stated, I do not condone hate mobs at all and wish to move forward on peaceful terms. I am sorry. 
and that apology is still up to this day. Same with Iron Mouses, who in a heartfelt statement apologized for her public outbursts, acknowledging the potential for unintended consequences when sharing personal feelings online. She expressed regret for any discomfort caused and pledged to focus on resolving future conflicts privately. She also extended a sincere apology to Nux, emphasizing that she harbored no ill will toward him. In a subsequent stream, she further elaborated on the situation, clarifying that they were not informed by management about their conversation with Nux prior to the video release. She expressed that she won't delete her tweet, explaining that it serves as a reminder to avoid making hasty conclusions in the future. This incident highlights an important lesson. Mistakes are common, but the ability to learn from them distinguishes negative experiences from positive ones. After all, the only way to avoid mistakes is to gain experience, and the only way to gain experience is to make mistakes. Nyaners put out two tweets as well apologizing publicly and providing further clarifications, but failing to name Nux by name, which brought on some criticism. Vey and Fruit also issued their own apology. This is when we fell under our first controversy and our third one, while well, we obviously keep our community out of our battle. I'm gonna be honest. It can be very easy to start a flame war. And for people to get and people involved with your own problems is a huge mistake. All of us here at Seat Next Gen truly believe that and all of us from behind the scenes, me and the commander, especially along with Gio, should always be able to handle our own problems and issues. We should never involve our community in our battles. Unlike our previous attackers, that have always involved their communities in some way, shape, or form, we have never asked y'all to do this, and we hump for e. Thank each and every one of y'all for allowing us to deal with our own attackers. As, in a way, we have a way to deal with it on our own. So, thank you so much. Obviously, it's a VTuber's responsibility to make sure their community stays out of the battles. It shows a level of responsibility, and even the actual overall just reliability. If a VTuber can handle an issue by themselves, then obviously it shows they're well better off compared to most. I must give it out to be Sojo's girls, eventually forgiving nuts, but the scars left behind on the scene are well known and will continue to be known. We'll move on to the next video as this is probably just closing statements by Rimura Star. Thank you, Rimura Star, for your obviously coverage on this. Must go with something more recent. A little bit shorter. How about this one? You track. How Once are your we project get past team that? leads at a price you'll love. Project. ASOL was the most popular virtual idol group in China who racked in millions of dollars. But the scandal that engulfed this group was a tale of exploitation so shocking that it became an international affair. This made audiences question everything and whether or not the fantasy they were buying into contributed to the downfall of their favorite idol and blinded them from seeing the truth until it was too late. Created by Yuha Entertainment, a company focused on putting together popular music groups and are owned by none other than ByteDance, the owners of TikTok, launched this project in 2020. Since launch, they've looked to increase the group's popularity on their own entertainment platform, Douyin, which is pretty much like Chinese TikTok. Known primarily as a tech company, ByteDance's venture into mocap VTuber was a logical step forward. 
pushing the boundaries of technological advancement by having them perform in real time behind their 3D avatars. What their anime avatars would perform on stream, the actress would do in real time. And the group consisted of five girls with five different personalities. Bella, Diana, Eileen, Ava and Carol, also known as Jail. But for the sake of clarity in this video, we will stick to Carol. And the group became an absolute phenomena. In 2021 alone, the group broadcasting donation revenue reached 24 million won. The first months of ASL's rise weren't easy. According to this article, their beautiful two-dimensional appearance did not win everyone over. Some people thought that this faceless live streaming method was inferior, calling them dogs in disguise. Others worried that the huge commercial organizations behind them would harm the virtual streamer circle dominated by indie streamers. Trolls also often targeted them, for several reasons. First, VTubers weren't as widely accepted back then and they were an easy target for normies. And also because they were seen as fake. Mostly because of management's focus on scripted content and defined characters' archetypes for each girl, which fueled accusations that the whole thing was way too staged. But the girls always handled it with grace and humor going along with it and eventually turning the trolls into fans that stayed. It was definitely a slow burn at first. The scripts they had to read out and the constant restraints management gave them didn't hook the fans right off the bat as it failed to establish a genuine connection with them. Carol in particular struggled the most with having to change her personality into the character envisioned by Aesol. She had to sing in a different way that was uncomfortable for her. She had to act cool and aloof like her character lore, but she had a shy personality that didn't really fit. She also struggled with the whole live streaming aspect and was not very good at it. To help her out, a group of 30 or so fans created an offline chat for her to practice her live streaming without the pressure of being officially live. These original fans ended up being named Carol's Knights and will be a recurring character later on in the story. But it was in moments such as these when the idols were able to slowly show their personalities and the human side of them that was the selling point for many. It was the unexpected shy personality of Carol or small personal tidbits the audience learned about the idols that made them curious to know more about them. For example, Carol's character had short hair, but while she danced in her mocap suit, fans noticed she would sometimes make a movement trying to move her hair back, hinting at her having long hair in real life. And this piqued their curiosity. And so while the fans were originally drawn in by beautiful avatars, they stayed because of the person behind those avatars. This was illustrated during a particularly touching moment in one of Diana's stream, where a fan donated to her with a message talking about coming home after long hours and being physically exhausted, but looking forward to watching her stream. The donor decided to cut their meal in half, only buying half as much chicken so they could spend the rest of the money to send her this My heart goes out to you girls message because it meant so much for them watching her. This froze Diana and all the viewers could tell that she was crying. She turned around and cried briefly, then came back to tell her fans to make sure to eat well and take care of themselves. Moments like these were etched in the audience's mind forever. But this is something the creators of ASOLs never truly grasped. The fans cared about the actress behind the VTubers, about their souls, but the company cared more about the fantasy they were selling, and the disparity between what ASOL thought was good for the brand and what the fans thought was good would only grow bigger and bigger until it combined into the perfect storm. Do you need a free, easy way to capture your gameplay? Introducing Outplay. Record anything on your... To add another layer to this, there's sort of an unspoken rule in the idol world as to not open the box, as they say. It's an expression that signifies looking into the idol's past life and into who they were before. There is an illusion and escape that these idols bring to their fans that opening the box would undo. Especially around 2020, where Chinese youth were becoming incredibly disillusioned with the 996 lifestyle and particularly difficult living conditions in China. 9 and 6 basically means employment that would last from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. six days per week. 
Watching those idols was an escape from a loop Chinese citizens felt they were stuck in. So for those people, they really clung to those ideals. For other more niche communities, however, they would dig a little deeper. They attempted to open the box, as they say. Although it was mostly kept to those small circles where you would only stumble upon that information if you actively looked for it, the girls' past life accounts were frequently unearthed, discovering social media posts as well as names getting leaked, and throughout the space of two years the group suffered multiple doxes. The doxing was really a problem, each time netizens connected more and more dots, but ASOL remained strangely silent on that matter. On May 10th, everything changes as ASOL officially announces Carol's indefinite hiatus, citing health and academic reasons. They assure fans that Carol is not quitting and that they won't try to replace her. In fact, they reiterate that ASOL is consisted of five outstanding young ladies and none of them can be missing. Make sure we they find the right lawyer to deal with our doxer slash attacker. This comes as a shock and makes audiences question okay. every other speculation they've seen before. If this was true, was everything else true as well? Netizens go back and revisit the other leaks and speculations and they find worrying screenshots from Carol's supposed account. In the first screenshot, Carol talks about a dance practice where she is overworked, was about to go and have some rest at the last session, decided to go to the last half hour mark, then came the K-pop remix version dance. I was once again stopped. My mind was a bit scattered when learning the dance, but finally, oh, when leading the dance, those on the way. team said the movement is too hard to remember. It's a combination of it. So I let the uh, girls on. Old one but the and dance teacher told me during the break, changes. too flashy, too flashy, I'll send you a video later. At the end, when doing the dance, the movement was reduced down, so it got safe. Now you. it's just another sad day. Hope there can be less of them. My job is so hey. mentally taxing. I have to dance around others. I just hope that I could dance happily, flashy, big movements filled with emotion. At last, I wish I could learn to move faster, remember them well. In another screenshot, Carol was hinting at suicidal thoughts. I'll be tougher and tougher. People will be riled up by all of those so-called internal info, unprotected info and safety. It's dark outside. It's even darker inside. I know now why those who committed got the idea. There is also a mention of a spine injury. Can't say it went smoothly. Got thoracic spine sprain when blowing my hair dry. Got called to do a meeting and yelled at, telling me to do a better face reveal. And for the face reveal, it means ending virtual streaming activities. Finally, in the last post, Carol is talking about letting go of her dignity and her fears of bringing shame to her family with her work failures. Sometimes I thought I'd be tough enough. Fought for my interests, but forgot to take care of my health. Fought for my job, but forgot to maintain my dignity. My older sister worries a lot about her divorce, bringing shame to her family. I worry about my failures. I did tell them that I wouldn't renew the contract at the meeting, but I was also hurting inside after exiting the room. I won't back down. I'll face it. Seriously. Another outrageous claim that shocked the fans was that it was discovered that the talents were paid an insanely low salary for the amounts of money they were earning. Here the numbers differ from several accounts so it's impossible to pinpoint an exact salary, but it seems it ranges between 8 and 11 KMB, which is roughly $990 to $1,500 per month. Even more shocking, it was discovered that the talents were paid a mere 1% commission of donations. But even worse so, the platform takes half of that, so they would only be left with a minuscule 0.5%. Picture this, if a fan donates $20 to ASOL, the idols would receive 10 cents. This felt like a huge slap in the face to so many netizens who donated their hard work money. When you donate money to a creator, you don't expect them to only see 0.5% of it. That fan from earlier that cut his meal purchase in half, who ate less so he could donate the other half of the money to his favorite idol, that money would go to line the pockets of a trillion dollar company. And the idol itself would only receive 0.5% of it. To put this in perspective, this article details that in a month last year, in 2021, Carol generated 2 million yuan, which is roughly $300,000 USD in tips alone in a single month. With this revenue cut, Carol would only see $1,500 out of the $300,000 she earned. 
in Insane. Not why only we that, but another video resurfaces where Carol talks about how she broke her phone but didn't have enough funds to buy a new one. This is a top idol in the country, and she can't even replace her phone? Something was not adding up, and this gave weight to the previous claims of the 0.5% commission. At the same time, when some fans looked through Carol's NetEase Cloud account, they found that she said on February 6, 2022, that her legs were scratched by the capture motion suit. Today, my left leg was cut by the mocap suit. Quite a big cut. My body was too cold to notice it at first, only to find out about it when I went to the bathroom and the cut started bleeding and it hurt real bad. I really hate it. I can't shower. We'll see about it tomorrow. The song is quite good though. And during the live stream on the same day, some fans noticed that Carol was in an abnormal state. She seemed to be behaving strangely. One fan asked ASOL officials about the situation. And ASOL had this habit of making weekly Q&A to respond to fans. So ASOL officials responded to this in the Q&A column on February 8th. Fan asked, what happened to Carol around 39 minutes into part 2 of today's live stream? Did she suddenly feel unwell? To which ASOL responds, Hello little friend, please rest assured there was no particular issues that occurred. At this point, fans become increasingly worried and wonder if Carol was actually going on a hiatus because of black company working conditions. Was ASOL trying to make her go away quietly because of the leaks? In that moment, they decided that they weren't just going to stand by and watch them do this to her. So on the evening of May 10th, led by the Billy Billy Royal Carol Knights, various ASL fan groups banded together to write an open letter to the ASL project staff, demanding that the project okay. discloses the specific treatment, working environment, and detailed training schedule of the actresses. They also questioned whether there were instances of overwork, workplace bullying, or privacy leaks by internal members. They wanted the project to ensure the protection and privacy of the idols in regards to all of the leaks and doxing happening. And furthermore, it demanded a more detailed explanation regarding Carol's hiatus. On May 11, the ASL members hold a special Q&A livestream in response to the controversy, but is met with backlash. Fans criticize the members for being forced to take the blame for management's actions. Why are they sending the VTubers to explain this away? Why can't ASOL management step up and answer for themselves? From here, ASOL's blunders one after another is dancing around the claims and never offering transparency, which only contributes to public backlash heightening. At 2.39 AM, ASOL's official account publishes a temporary Q&A column, refuting some information circulating online. First of all, they denied the identity of users claiming to be insiders. Secondly, they denied that group members had to pay for their own own training stating that all of ASOL's training is conducted under company contracts with partner institutions. These contracts do not have the right to be resold or transferred and all courses fees are borne by the company. The girls can book courses according to their own schedules and personal habits. And finally, they denied the rumors of the 11,000 yuan base salary plus the 1% commission and practicing until 2 or 3 a.m. every day responding that specific really salary information cannot be disclosed due to privacy concerns. Due to ASOL's refusal to disclose specific information due to privacy concerns, as they said, and the lack of direct response to fans' most pressing concerns, such as the privacy leaks, fans expressed distrust in the official statement. And this Why this one in just room give early them a number? Just there was something coffee. suspicious going on. Now, as I've mentioned before, this company is a tech company firsthand. They always try to innovate on the tech, the 3Ds, the mocap, and even the AI. At 9.44 AM, a Bilibili user unearthed a video suspected to be an early livestream function test for the ASOL project, and there was a few problems with it. The video showed an AI-controlled Eileen interacting with the audience. And at the end of it, there was a segment where a redeem would make her chest bigger. The fans were outraged beyond measure by the company's decision. Their idol, someone they had immense respect and admiration for, was being treated in a way they found unacceptable. The proposed redeem option was viewed as a massive act of disrespect akin to soft-core pornography. At 3.50 p.m., the official account posted an update 
stating that after obtaining the members' consent, they decided to adjust the evening's live stream schedule. Carol would first stream on her own, then the other four members would go live. This announcement was also met with backlash. Fans believe that this was a deliberate attempt to separate the other four girls from Carol and divide the fan them quite base. Adorable. So an hour later, the official account posted an update you know? apologizing to fans stating that they had noticed a discussion about Carol and the other members being separated into two livestream rooms. The official account submitted to a lack of consideration me, regarding this issue and changed the plan to have everyone broadcast together in Carol's livestream instead. During this time, the Vanguard faction, a fans group, are secretly planning to use scripts to send a large number of identical comments to flood the screen to force the management to answer their questions during the live stream. And on Billy Billy, the comments are displayed on screen, so this would be a way to force them to take accountability. While everybody is waiting for the broadcast to start, the ASL project lead decides to publish a letter to the fans, apologizing to all the fans and those who were disturbed, and then provided some response, but not all of the right ones. They kind of doubled down on the whole salary rumors about the actresses having low income, being exploited, and having poor working conditions being false, but again refused to give any specific details regarding it. So this is the second trust me bro fans receive, which made them increasingly frustrated. Most egregious though was when the project lead stated that they'd never had heard the word abuse, and then proceeded to promise to strengthen and effective communication with the girls. Which is wild to me, because if there was workplace abuse, did they expect her to say it outright to them? Besides that, they explained that after the explosive popularity of the ASL project, the exploration of AI and interactive livestream was terminated. So they weren't planning on reviving that at all. They also sort of tried to explain away the wild spendings, stating that Yuha still had considerable shares of the revenue rights that needed to be paid off, and stated that due to the profit sharing, research and development, and art Cost, the project was still operating at a significant commander. loss. Hey, However, they have been striving to provide team miles. members with competitive salaries and benefits within the industry. But again, this is just something the company failed to understand. They tried to provide users and justify their spending by saying, look at all of these beautiful things we're investing in, these new assets, this latest technology. But to the fans, this is just not what they cared about. They cared about the idols. They cared about the souls. Finally, they emphasized the privacy issues that the fans were raising, excusing it by saying that the last motion capture room information leak was suspected to have been caused by the IT supplier during equipment maintenance, and accountability is being pursued. So they basically acknowledged that the mocap studio that was leaked was indeed theirs, but they blame it on the IT supplier. They also state that they will take the lead in further strengthening and paying attention to this issue, which were not very satisfying reassurance to the fans. Finally, the planned broadcast happens, and the five girls go live and take turns interacting with the fans. The comments are botted like planned by vanguards, and they flood the screen with we're not going to the bird's nest anymore, we're going home, making it difficult for the members to communicate normally with fans. As for the bird's nest meeting, this refers to the Beijing National Stadium, a large and prestigious venue often used for major events and concerts. The phrase we're not going to the bird's nest anymore, we're going home, implies that fans are disappointed with the project and are withdrawing their support, suggesting that ASOL's future success is now uncertain. However, in that livestream, Carol indirectly confirmed that the NetEase Cloud Music account was indeed hers, and also confirmed the authenticity of the leg injury caused by the motion capture suit during the livestream on the evening of February 6. She also emphasized that the reason for her departure should be based based on the official announcement. The other four members all stated that they would not leave and would stay with ASOL all the way. So it's clear that ASOL's value and views of their souls plays a role here because of how they speak about it will immediately enrage the fans. The fans want to know that their favorite idols are treated fairly. However, all the responses they've received so far were always the rumors are false. However, we won't disclose the actual truth. Separating the live streams, AI idol video leaks, and corporate language in their statement, ASOL did not understand that to the fans, the soul was worth more than the model of the character ASOL tried to script. The fans who themselves struggled with financial or personal issues 
resonated with Carol. They saw themselves struggling every day while their bosses or companies made all of them money. But when the illusion was shattered and it showed them the ugly truth, that their favorite idols were being abused, that ByteDance and ASOL's parent companies are making record profits and growth, but the ASOL idols would see none of it. And the whole time, the fans were donating to the idols without realizing that 99.5% of it would never reach them. So once audience didn't trust ASOL to make it right by the idols anymore, the ASOL fans collectively decided to spread the word. They needed the world to know what was happening to Carol. If the company did not care enough about the idol or the fans to give a proper response, then they would. On May 13th, the ASOL hashtag started trending on The situation goes absolutely viral. Posts about Carol were trending immediately and were picked up by mainstream media. 中資人到底可以分配到多少錢應該依法去爭取。This brought international scrutiny to the entire idol industry. Some articles being incredibly critical of ASOL, like this Hong Kong article claiming that mainland VTubers' million dollar subscriptions income is actually lower than that of a Hong Kong white collar worker. The article compares their income to other corporal VTubers around the world, such as Mori Calliope or Rusia Ruha, who earned much better revenue split at the time. And there was also some domestic media defending them. Either way, this shed a negative light on VTubers and brought the government down for investigation. In a shocking turn of event, the next day, ASOL officially announces the termination of Carol's 14 months in advance and her hiatus concert, originally planned on May 20th, is also cancelled. So they basically skipped the whole hiatus and went straight to termination. They claim they will pay a termination fee within seven working days after her termination and they vowed that they won't attempt at replacing the actress behind Carol. They also show her signed contract as proof and give a tiny bit more details about the salary she had which is a monthly fixed income plus bonus plus 10% of the total turnover of the live broadcast. Additionally, an internal letter from ByteDance is leaked immediately after this announcement. In this matter, we believe that the negative emotions caused by malicious rumors may have been too much for her. We have tried to communicate, but it has not been completely effective. We truly acknowledge her dedication under the pressure of public opinion, Carol had been under tremendous pressure and has chosen to leave early. Due to the confidentiality agreement, we have paid her a severance package and wish her all the best in the future. They go on. The online rumors about members being exploited and the company abusing members are completely false. Apart from the previously disclosed information, the members' contracts, salaries, and personal safety have always been our top priorities. From a safety perspective, we have always arranged dedicated vehicles and security for all members during live broadcasts and other events. And finally, they touch on the income structure. Today, we have decided to publicly disclose of Carol's income structure, basic salary plus bonus plus live stream revenue. 10% of the total revenue, for example, if the total revenue of a live stream is 100 yuan, Carol can receive 10 yuan. But they still refuse to reveal the revenue share and exact numbers claiming it would be unfair to other members and due to the confidentiality requirements. According to industry practice, ASOL's livestream revenue is mainly distributed to the cooperating livestream platform, the cooperating agency, and the members. Well, yes, ASOL, it is industry practice to have a three-way split, but the numbers of the split itself is important context here. Finally, they end the letter expressing disapproval of the criticism they received, 
chalking it up to cyberbullying and harassment. Through investigation, we have discovered some malicious rumors and rumor-mongering behaviors. They have used methods such as malicious editing, spreading false information, and inciting conflicts to manipulate public opinion and use everyone's love for the members to carry out malicious framing of the members, misleading real users. They have also engaged in large-scale inappropriate behaviors such as cyberbullying and harassment. We have already taken the first step to report to this to the relevant departments for processing. Finally, as this situation had grown so viral that the Chinese government decided to step in, the District of Human Resources and Social Security Bureau responds to public inquiry stating that as a member of ASOL, Carol signed the entertainer signing contract with a contract period of July 15, 2020 to July 15, 2023 which includes agreeing to financial aid, bonus and tax coverage, not specified due to industry standards, and proclaimed that no evidence of salary withholding or forced contract signing was found during the investigation, which basically amounted to, well, the contract was technically legal and she wasn't forced to agree to sign it. Carol signed the contract and she was treated as they agreed to. And indeed, perhaps there was no money that was withheld or no forced labor, but what if she just signed a shitty contract? Sure, it wasn't illegal, but was it fair? On May 17, ASOL responds to public concerns in their weekly Q&A, denying allegations of mistreatment and stating they have contacted the police regarding the information leaks. At 6.06 p.m., ASOL officially releases a Q&A, stating that the rumors about the girls having low income, being exploited and having poor working conditions were all false. Regarding the issues of privacy leaks, they stated that it was inconvenient to disclose details as it involved the girls' private information. After this announcement, some domestic media started reporting more kindly onto the ASOL situation. This article in People's Daily Online, for example, states that judging from the response of relevant parties, the accusations of workplace bullying and unfair salary distributions are purely imaginary. The commentary also stated, everyone's passion deserves respect, whether they love real idols or virtual idols, but this is not an excuse for some fanatical fans to be irrational. Being passionate about virtual idols should not deviate from real-world rules. On CCTV, the official WeChat account published an article titled A Top Idol Decides to Resign, commenting on the incident as well, and stating, even the best technology is meant to serve people, it becomes meaningless when it detaches from or ignores people. The article also states, don't suppress the people behind for the sake of promoting virtual idols. So clearly it is a critique of the ASOL stands that are lashing out at the corporation. On May 18th, another internal letter from Biden was leaked again, pointing out that in the face of online rumors, the company's repeated clarifications are meaningless and excessive entanglement with former employees will also be seen by public opinion as the company bullying the weak. At the same time, the project team is encouraged to give back to worthy fans with better content. On behalf of the company, I conducted a one-on-one -on -one conversation with the four remaining members of ASOL. I also communicated with relevant personnel, including the operation and production teams, and reviewed the detailed incident investigation report submitted by the company yesterday. Externally, the members have been labeled as victims and tools, which has deeply affected them. The company believes that we should not continue to be silent and passively respond to the accusations. We should not allow the endless and unfounded accusations and distorted narratives to continue. One of the company's public relations principle is if you want to be loved, you must first be brave enough to step out. The company believes that we should not become a sweatshop. Excessive pressure is counterproductive. Individuals can only unleash their full potential and contribute to the company's success when they are in a healthy and supportive work environment. Based on the above investigation result and considerations, we have released today's Q&A. This is also the last official statement from the ASOL production committee regarding this incident. I hope that the colleagues working on the V project will continue to create excellent content, utilize effective live broadcasts and planning to respond to the situation and continue to support our idols. We will not give up and we will persevere until the end.
The problem with this letter is that it was suspected by fans to have been leaked on purpose as part of a PR move to corroborate what had been said in official statements previously. This statement in particular was mostly used as a defense tool by the ASOL Defense Force, which is a countergroup which emerged in opposition to the ASOL criticism. These fans are diehard ASOL fans, similarly to the Doki Burtzel and Tatsuki controversy that we had in the West this year, the fan base became divided with those who were highly critical of the company versus the one who wanted to defend the company. And those ASOL stands believe verbatim what was stated in the official ASOL statements and the Chinese government statement, so they did not believe the bullying allegations and were also extremely critical of Carol's behavior. They blamed her for most of the problems caused within the company, but also the problems fans caused with their speculation that may have hurt the other members. And as with every controversy online, not everything said by internet users ends up being true. But these fans believe that Carol let it happen on purpose. They believe that she should have controlled her fan base. She knew some of those rumors weren't true. She knew exactly what she was doing, but she let them because she knew she would get an advantage in her exit of the company if she managed to weaponize her audience. She let it all happen because she knew it would work in her favor. As for me, I don't believe she was obligated to speak up. Sure, some claims might have been hyped up by the fans and were not illegal per se, but again, you can have bullying and you can have bad workplace conditions without them being illegal. After the incident, various ASOL's accounts started experiencing significant loss of followers and rapidly declining in social media numbers. Games under ByteDance such as Flower in the Wild and Code Arrival also got negative review bomb, and merchandises in ASOL's Doyen store received such a large number of negative reviews and reports that it had to be removed off the platform due to them breaking platform rules. Data related to ASOL's updates, videos, and live streams have all declined significantly as well. ASOL's original fan base was showing signs of fragmentation. On June 21st, a mural of Carol located on the south bank of Fumin Bridge in Hunan District was vandalized by unknown individuals less than a week after its completion. This incident sparked heated discussions among fans and further escalated in fighting within the fandom. On May 20th, the motion capture equipment provider also issued a statement denying their equipment could have caused Carol's alleged injury. They wanted none of that negative press. As I mentioned before, the doxing was always a problem with ASOL, and this problem was not attenuated by the controversy. In fact, it got amplified throughout that time. On May 10th, all of the members of ASOL got affected by a large scale dox which revealed some of their personal addresses. On May 24th, ASOL attempts to calm the fans' angers by planning another Q&A and they make a statement about wanting to protect their talents, but they attribute the doxing to one of the members' fault, to which the fans speculated it was actually Carol taking a balcony selfie. The company believed that because of this selfie, bad faith actors had managed to triangulate the idol's location based on the landmarks and buildings in the background of that photo. However, some fans were not sold on this answer and they believed that the address was leaked on a large scale base because of the courier address used by Carol was exposed by a doxer. Here the fans of different factions started arguing again. Some pinned the blame on Carol, but the Carol defenders went as far as to recreate the selfie themselves and attempted the triangulation themselves to prove that the triangulation couldn't be as accurate as ASOL claimed due to the lack of information. However, as with most internet discourse goes, this only amplified the different factions in fighting. Eventually, Carol returned to streaming under a new persona followed by a majority of her fans. She releases a song cover on July 21st that received over 1 million views views, followed by two other song covers, all boasting over a million views. Nowadays, Carol is thriving as a facecam streamer and seems happy in her newfound environment where she enjoys the freedom to express herself through her craft as she pleases and enjoys a decent popularity. Her loyal fan base is still as dedicated as ever, and we can see this from this Carol mural that is still visited by her fans to this day. And these days, no one calls her Carol anymore. 
thank you all so much for watching. If you've made it to the end of the video, make sure to leave a horse emote in the comment section. If you'd like to support the channel, make sure to like and subscribe as this really helps the channel in the eyes of the Algo gods. And if you'd like to support the channel once... Obviously, thank you, Reamer, uh, Evening Star, everything. I want to go over more, but it seems I'm gonna have to hit Starbucks to get some coffee. I, I had a hard time staying awake. Uh, thank you for all that is going to watch this or and watch this on live stream. Until next time, I am Ashi Williams, the Seat News Network. Go support Ringler, Evening Star, and don't forget to support us on all of our social media. Uh, we, we will see you in the next planet. And to the one that has currently stalking us, well, legal ramifications are coming. And you're going to pay. Bye bye. Thank you, Remora. Remora, right?